Today, let's talk about limiting beliefs and how what you believe and the stories you tell yourself can make all the difference between whether you stay stuck in a cycle of addiction and relapse for a long time or whether you can untangle your brain from addiction. The stories we tell ourselves and the things we believe matter a lot and they can make a huge difference to your chances of success. And I'm talking about this today because this is an interesting thing I'm observing. Since I started Quit By Healing, I have seen thousands upon thousands of comments on my videos, especially on some of my TikToks that went viral, but also on some of my more popular YouTube videos. And I've also seen thousands of comments and questions in the Quit By Healing community. And in all of this, I'm seeing some clear and interesting patterns emerge. One of those patterns is that I'm seeing the same limiting beliefs pop up over and over again. So today, I'm going to tell you the three most common limiting beliefs that people have about addiction and overcoming addiction. We'll look at how exactly those limiting beliefs are affecting you and what you can do to change those beliefs and give yourself a better chance to quit. So let's get right into it. Limiting belief number one is it's impossible to quit. This phrase or a very close variation of this phrase, it's impossible to quit, shows up a lot. I see a lot of people typing this and posting this. And usually this is something that comes out of frustration. So maybe you're really, really struggling with difficult urges. Maybe you've just relapsed and you're really frustrated about that. And that's kind of the reaction. It's impossible. I tried so hard. I relapsed again. This is just impossible. This belief is very interesting because it's a perfect example of a self-fulfilling prophecy. A self-fulfilling prophecy is something you believe and by believing it, it becomes true. So if you believe that it is impossible to overcome your addiction, then when you are struggling with withdrawals or when you're feeling the urge, that can become part of the reason why you relapse because you're going, oh, this is really hard. I'm trying not to relapse, but hold on. It's actually impossible. It's impossible to quit. So why am I even trying? Why am I suffering? I'm going to fail anyway, so I might as well fail now. You see how the more strongly you believe that it's impossible to quit, the more likely it is that you will actually quit. And then comes in a second factor, which is the confirmation bias. So let's briefly talk about cognitive biases. A cognitive bias, that's a thing out of the field of psychology and like usual with academic terms, right? It's kind of a complicated sounding thing, but really a cognitive bias is just a typical thinking mistake. So when you look at how humans behave and how we think, and how we make decisions, there are certain thinking mistakes that we just tend to make. The human brain is not a perfect rational reasoning machine. We make certain mistakes and we make certain mistakes systematically, which means you can predict that humans will make this type of mistake over and over again. And that is a cognitive bias. My favorite cognitive bias and the one that I think everybody should know about is the confirmation bias. So what is the confirmation bias? It's the tendency that we all have to look for evidence that confirms something we want to believe and ignore evidence that doesn't confirm what we want to believe. And this can really be true for anything. So let's take a totally random example. Let's say I believe that I am too short and maybe I have disadvantages in life because I'm too short. If I really believe that, I can easily find evidence. So maybe I'm just walking down the street and I'm noticing everyone who's taller than me. I go, oh, look, that person is taller than me. That person is taller than me. That person is taller than me. And every time that's like, well, look at all these tall people. Clearly, I'm too short. And on the other hand, people who are shorter than me, who are also walking around on the street, I just don't notice them that much. And if I believe that I have certain disadvantages because I'm too short, then again, any example that confirms this belief is something that would really stand out to me. So if I'm like, oh, my work colleague got a promotion and I didn't, and he's taller than me. See, see, that's why. If I were taller, I would have gotten the promotion. Or I'm walking down the street and I see a tall man with a beautiful woman on his arm and I don't have a girlfriend. Like, oh, see, he's taller than me. He's got a girlfriend or a wife. I don't. This is further evidence that I'm too short and that's the problem. But then if somebody who's shorter than me gets a promotion, I don't notice or I don't remember it or it doesn't count or I see a guy who's shorter than me with a beautiful woman on his arm and I'm like, well, but, but he's, you know, I make an exception. It's like, that doesn't count because he's rich or something like that. And so in this way, even if I actually see an equal amount of people who are taller than me and people who are shorter than me, I can always tell myself a story and I will also subconsciously notice 
all the tall people more than the short people and so confirm the belief that I have that I am indeed too short. And like I said, this is just a random example. This is true for anything. If you want to see this in action, you can easily see this anywhere where people draw dividing lines between each other. So you can see this in politics or with religion or anything like that. So if we take politics, if you just take the dividing line of liberal versus conservative, left versus right, you know, people on the left want to believe that people on the right are wrong and maybe even evil, and they will just see all the examples that confirm that belief and ignore all the examples that wouldn't confirm that belief and vice versa. And so that's how both sides can believe we are obviously right, you guys are obviously wrong, and just be blind to all the evidence to the contrary. So that's the confirmation bias. Let's bring this back to the problem of the belief it's impossible to quit and the self-fulfilling prophecy. So like we've already seen, if you strongly believe that it's impossible to quit, that becomes a reason for you to quit because why even try? So then you relapse and you feel bad about the relapse, but that relapse is a further confirmation of your belief that it's impossible. Because next time you're trying to quit and you struggle, you go, well, it's impossible to quit and look at all the evidence I have. Last time I tried and I relapsed. The time before that I tried and I relapsed. The time before that I tried and I relapsed and so on. So the more often you use this belief as a justification to quit, the stronger your belief becomes and that makes it a vicious cycle. So do you see now how the belief itself and the maybe innocent sounding you know, frustrated expression of, I relapsed again, it's just impossible to quit, can actually become the source of your problem. It can become the reason why it's so hard for you to quit. But now, of course, you're wondering, well, okay, but what do we do about it? What if I do have this belief? What if I do tell myself this story? The first thing is to realize and acknowledge that you are playing an active part here, that your beliefs are made up of stories that you tell yourself and things that you repeat. And so the very act of thinking it's impossible to quit or typing it's impossible to quit or saying it's impossible to quit is you reinforcing that story in your life. This is a tricky thing with beliefs because if you truly believe something, it doesn't feel like a story that you're telling yourself. It feels like you're stating the truth. But that's the first thing to realize is to take a step back and say, hold on, there are many things I could believe and I have some choice in what I believe through the stories I repeat to myself and through phrases that I think and type and say. The second thing is that you can use evidence. You can actively seek out evidence to prove yourself wrong. And again, because the human brain is the human brain, this is not usually what we do. This is the opposite of what we usually do. But once you realize the first two things, which is one, the belief it's impossible to quit is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's making it harder for you to quit. And two, you have some control here. Then you can take a more active role and say, hold on, if it's possible that this belief is actually not the rock solid truth, but it's a story I'm telling myself, then I could find out by looking for evidence to the contrary. And there, another interesting thing that I'm seeing in the Quit by Healing community is that we already have loads and loads of success stories. We have loads of people and also lots and lots of comments of people saying, you know, some people are early in their journey. They're going, okay, I'm on day five, I'm on day seven or whatever. But we have lots of people who are several weeks, several months, and even years into their journey of recovery. So if you want to, and if you look for it, you can find lots and lots of evidence of people successfully quitting this addiction. And you can find it in the comments on my content. You can find it in the community. And you can find it in many, many other stories all around the internet and on, in books and so on, right? Addiction recovery is not a new thing. People have been struggling with and learning how to overcome addictions for thousands of years, presumably. If you find yourself having this belief or even partially having this belief that it's impossible to quit, I recommend you do that. Go prove yourself wrong. And you will see that there are so many stories, there are so many success stories out there of people who have overcome addictions, even really, really severe addictions from really difficult starting conditions that you have to come to the conclusion, well, clearly it's possible. It must be possible, right? If it were impossible, there would be zero success stories. But since there are thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of success stories out there, you can't really hold on to the belief that it's impossible. But this brings us to limiting belief number two, which is 
I can't quit. So this is a variation of it's impossible to quit, but you've made it personal. This can happen when you do acknowledge, okay, other people seem to be having a good time here. Other people seem to be able to overcome their addiction, but I can't. It's impossible for me. This is worth examining closely because this is basically the second most common limiting belief I see. I also see this repeated over and over again. And here's how this thing works. If we take a closer look at this, here's how this belief works. You go, I can't quit and here's why. Basically, there's always a more or less elaborate explanation. There's always a story that goes along with why you specifically can't quit. And it could be something like, oh, it's because I have ADHD or it's because I had a specially difficult childhood. It's because of you know this specific trauma that I've experienced that makes it impossible for me to quit. Or it's because it's too late for me because I got addicted at such a young age and I've been addicted for so long. It's impossible for me. Maybe you can quit, but I can't or whatever other circumstances, you will have some explanation that says, here are the reasons, and maybe you have a long list of reasons. Say, see all of these reasons, this is why I can't quit. Once again, let me remind you that a belief does not feel like just a story you tell yourself. It feels like the truth. So it can be tricky to see past your own deception here. But as I've said many times, awareness is a key ingredient for overcoming addiction. So we want to bring awareness to this. And what just seems like an obvious truth to you, what seems like the truth, what seems like, no, this is not something I'm making up. This is not a list of excuses. This is a list of rational reasons. We want to bring awareness to that and go, hold on, what's really going on here? Why am I telling an elaborate story about why it's impossible for me to quit? The tricky thing about this belief is that it can be quite resilient against evidence. Because even if you find lots and lots of evidence of other people quitting, you can always say, well, they're different. They didn't have these problems I have. They didn't have these especially bad circumstances that I'm in. So therefore, them being able to quit is no proof that I can quit. And of course, this belief can reinforce itself and be a self-fulfilling prophecy, just like the previous one. So here too, if you strongly believe that for me specifically, it's impossible to quit, then when you're struggling, that can be the reason you relapse. Again, you go, well, it's impossible anyway, or I can't quit, right? It's impossible for me specifically, so I might as well give up. So then you give up and that relapse becomes one further piece of evidence that in the future you can refer to and say, see, even though I tried so hard, I kept relapsing. So the self-reinforcing nature is exactly the same, but this one is trickier because you can protect yourself against evidence to the contrary. So what can we do about this? There are two things. The first is, once again, you can actively, you can choose to see this as potentially just a belief, just a story you're telling yourself, and then go look at evidence that might prove you wrong. Because if you're open to it, what you'll find if you really look for it is that there are many stories of people who had it far worse than you. There are people who had addictions that are far more severe than what you're dealing with, who were addicted for far longer than you were, who had much more severe addictions, you know, to maybe substances and who took this to the brink of death, who really almost destroyed themselves entirely on some extremely hard addiction and they still managed to get out. I guarantee you there are stories out there of people who have far worse starting conditions than you who have managed to overcome this addiction. So if you're actually open to changing this belief, you can find evidence that proves you wrong. The second thing is to realize that you're just not that special. You are not the sole exception here. You're not the one person on earth who cannot overcome an addiction. Look, Everybody is unique. Yes, you are a unique human being and the very specifics of your story and your circumstances are unique to you. But still, you're not that special because there are millions of other people who are just slightly different and who come from a very similar background and who have very similar circumstances to struggle with. So even if you're unique, you're not that special. That's what I mean, right? You're not the only one here. In the end, you're one of us. For me, this was really a breakthrough insight. You know, at some point in my life, I realized that I was in many ways treating myself as the sole exception in the entire world. 
I'm like, I'm the one person who doesn't deserve love or the one person who, you know, isn't good enough and doesn't deserve acceptance or something like that. Can that really be like among 8 billion people? I'm the one, I'm the one exception. And that just doesn't make any sense because that would somehow imply that I am the main character on planet Earth or maybe even in the entire universe. That is, of course, what a very, very immature mind might think. So when you're very young, you grow up, from your first person perspective, of course, you're the most important person in your life. But as you grow older, you start to realize, oh, other people are people like me, they have their own lives. And it's not just me who matters. And whenever we tell ourselves this kind of story where it's like, oh, but, but I can't, I'm like the sole exception. It is like that very immature part of our mind, the part of our mind that hasn't grown up yet and realized, hold on, I'm actually just one of many, many people. To unpack beliefs like this and see if maybe you have an immature part of yourself that holds on to this kind of belief. Or also to just realize how your beliefs are just stories you tell yourself and deconstruct that. I highly recommend that you do some introspective writing. And in case you haven't tried that yet, there is a free introspective writing course in my community. So you can check out the link in the description join my Discord community and take the introspective writing course there. It's completely free and this will help you a lot in rewriting your own beliefs and helping yourself on the journey of quitting addiction. Finally, the third most common limiting belief is this. I've tried everything. This is also something that people often express and it's either that phrase or something very closely related to that phrase. And it's usually coming from frustration as well, right? Where someone goes, okay, I relapsed again. I've tried everything. I'm at the end of the rope, basically. Well, I don't know what the hell to do here. And this is also an interesting belief. And it's also a cousin of the other beliefs. It's kind of another variation of the same kind of belief. Because what's implied in this is, again, a reason to give up. So you're struggling and you tell yourself, I've tried everything, I've failed every single time, so why even keep trying? Might as well relapse now. What's really interesting about this limiting belief is that when I ask someone who says this, okay, what have you tried? Can you like list it out? That list is usually extremely short. So most people who say, I've tried everything, I just can't do it, will then say, well, okay, you know, I've, I've tried really hard and, you know, I, I watched a NoFap video and maybe I read a book about it and it just doesn't work. And it's like, okay, that's three things. You've tried three things. That's hardly everything, is it? But what you're telling yourself, so you tried a couple of things and often you've tried the same thing over and over again. So the most common mistake people make is just use willpower. So I try to quit with willpower, it doesn't work, I relapse, then I try again, and I basically tell myself I'm gonna use more willpower this time. I try again, I fail again, and so on and so forth. And then you feel like I've tried everything, but actually you've tried one thing a hundred times and it failed a hundred times. So maybe don't try that thing again, because if it failed the last hundred times, it's probably gonna fail the next time as well, right? But what you're telling yourself is I've tried everything, I'm at the end of the rope, there's nothing else I can do, where really you've tried one thing. If you have this limiting belief, once again, the first thing to do here is be aware of it, catch yourself thinking this, right? Become the observer of your own thoughts where you go, hold on, I'm telling myself that I've tried everything in frustration. I'm telling myself I've tried everything, therefore it's impossible for me to quit, which is like a combination of all three limiting beliefs, right? If I'm telling myself that I wanna catch myself and go, hold on, this is one of those limiting beliefs. This is part of what's going wrong here. And then specifically for this one, remind yourself that this is about using the right strategies. Okay, quitting an addiction is not about willpower. It is not about just trying hard. It is about finding the right combination of things that works for you. In general, with Quit by Healing, we talk about a couple of pillars of things you need to be doing. One of them is being very clear about your reason for quitting, having a really strong why and a very well formulated, not just a vague sense of why you want to quit, but a very clearly formulated, this is why I want to quit. This is the decision I am making. Then the second pillar is you need to be abstaining and you need to be making changes in your environment to help you abstain. You need to be aware of your triggers and remove those triggers from your environment. Environment change is a thousand times more powerful than willpower. Next, the third part, now that you've cut out this source of stimulation that you were addicted to, 
The third thing is you have to bring in healthy replacement habits. You basically cut out a source of dopamine from your life, but you crave that. You crave a certain kind of stimulation that is associated with dopamine, and there are healthy ways of getting that. So you need to find, and we usually talk about things like exercise, working on some big ambitious project and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into all the details here. There's lots of other content on my channel about this. But you need to bring in that replacement source of dopamine. You need to bring in those healthy replacement habits. That is the counterbalance to the abstinence that was the second pillar. And then the fourth pillar is you need to be doing the internal work to address your underlying issues. This is where introspective writing and shadow work and embodiment and so on come in, where you are acknowledging that you are addicted for a reason, that there's some pain inside you that you've been using this addiction to avoid. And you're doing the work in order to find out what's going on here. What's my What's my pain? What's my trauma? What are the things I'm avoiding? And you have methods, you have strategies for how to deal with this and how to work through it. And right there, I've just given you a very quick summary of the four pillars of what we talk about for overcoming addiction, the quit by healing way. And right there, for each of those, there are many different strategies. And so right there, you can tell that there are dozens upon dozens of things you can be trying. And unless you've tried all of them, so unless your list of things you've tried is literally hundreds of items long, you have not tried everything. But really, the main takeaway here is to recognize that when you have this kind of belief in your mind, to recognize that this is said in frustration, right? That this is something that comes out of you in frustration. It's kind of a I'm ready to give up type expression. But if you keep telling yourself that story, it will get worse. And to realize there are many things you can do. And my recommendation, obviously, is engage with my content. Go through my playlists, listen to the podcast episodes, look at my, you know, how to quit playlists and all this kind of stuff, where I lay out all of these tools and how to use them and why to use them. And also join the Quit by Healing community. And there you can get accountability from other people and you can check in every day and so on and so forth. Right? There's so many things you can try, but realize that in order to overcome this addiction, there's a whole range of tools you can and should be using. And it's something that will take time. It will take time for you to learn all of this, to understand all of this and to implement it in your life. And that's perfectly fine. But that is the journey you're on. It's not just trying and failing and trying and failing and being frustrated. And this brings us full circle back to the confirmation bias, because it's possible that you're stuck in this entire cycle because that's essentially what you want to believe. This is called learned helplessness in psychology, or it's more commonly known as a victim mindset. And unfortunately, this is another thing that it can happen to us. This is a common thing that can happen to us where basically unconsciously you want to feel like a victim. And so all you've been doing is reinforcing that story about you being a victim. And just like we've seen several times up until now, you have the confirmation bias working here where you have this feeling of I'm a victim, I can't do it, I'm not good enough, and I'm trying and failing and trying and failing. And so you're confirming that belief for yourself. And one of the reasons why you haven't been actually looking for all these different strategies and implementing them in your life and, and getting accountability and all this kind of stuff is because that would break the belief, that would break that story of you being alone and a victim and it would like ba basically take away that thing where you get to wallow in your self-pity which part of you likes, part of you likes that feeling of, oh, poor me, and part of you maybe feels safe in that victim role. So there too, the confirmation bias and a self-fulfilling prophecy can keep you stuck in a cycle. And what I've tried to do here is kind of zoom out and show you how this can be happening on multiple layers, right? That the entire thing that you're going through might be you confirming the belief that you're a victim and you're not good enough to yourself over and over again by being stuck in this cycle of addiction and by telling yourself the story that you're trying and failing and trying and failing. And if that's the case, then first of all, here you are finally recognizing this pattern. That is a big deal, right? Recognizing the loop for what it is, is the first step to breaking out of it. And secondly, this is exactly where things like introspective writing and shadow work come in. 
you can take this apart, you can understand what is going on, you can find out which parts of you want to remain in this victim role, you can have a conversation with those parts of yourself, and you can step out of this and make progress here. You can learn this for free in the Quit by Healing Discord community. So check out the link there. There's also a free shadow work course where I walk you through the exercises you can do to do this type of work. All right, so that's it. Those are the three most common limiting beliefs that I keep seeing over and over again in the Quit by Healing comments and community and my advice for how to overcome them. I hope that this episode helped you on the level of awareness that you have now a different kind of awareness about the things you tell yourself and the things that you write and say and that you can catch yourself in that cycle and start taking an active role in forming the beliefs that will actually serve you. As always, if you have any questions about this, go ahead and leave a comment below. You can also leave a voice note if you want me to answer a voice note in a future episode and all the links to the stuff I talked about will be in the description. And if you appreciate the content that I'm putting out for free, please leave a like, a review, a star rating, wherever you're watching this or listening this right on your podcast platform or on YouTube, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. All of this kind of engagement tends to help because the algorithms on these platforms will decide to show this to more people when the people watching and listening are engaging with it. So your engagement, your comments, your ratings are highly appreciated. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.